Welcome to Around Town featuring what's happening here in the great, greater Concord area. I'm your host, Dick Patton. And it's a pleasure to welcome you back as we're now in the middle of July. And hate to say it, but August is kind of waving at us from a distance. And uh, of course, already the Halloween signs are up in some of the stores. And get back to school already. The sales have started, so who knows what else is on the horizon. But... Today I'm very pleased, and I met this. Didn't haven't met him yet in person till just now. But I had an incident the other day where I was referred to his company. And have you ever heard of the Dirt Doctors? Well, today I'm talking with Anthony Druin, who is the owner, right, or manager. I'm a senior project manager. Senior project manager for the Dirt Doctors. Now that's not a new rock and roll group. That is a very much a business out here on 106 in Pembroke, because I went to the city dump, or I should say, excuse me, the landfill, but over there on, um, well, I still call it the dump road, but it's, called, it's not that now, but anyway. And unfortunately, I thought they took leaves and branches and all that sort of stuff. We had cut off some stuff in our place, and when I got there, I was told, no, they don't accept that. And I said, huh? Hmm. Now you collect them in the fall and the spring. I What the heck? I, well, anyway, so I said, well, what's supposed to do with them? And so she said, well, have you ever heard of the dirt doctors? And I said, no, never heard of them. So she referred me over to you, and I found it on 106, not too far from Vino's. And I was truly amazed by what I saw down there. You And I took the ride around the tour afterwards, and... Uh, how do, how long have you been there? So we've been we've been at that yard since about 2003. We're a family-run business that's actually been in business since about 1989. Really? Um, and we, what we are is we're a not only a retail center but a wholesale landscape construction supply company. Uh, we generate our own mulch. We generate our own compost, organic leaf and lawn debris compost. Uh, mm -hmm. We screen locally sourced loam and amend it there on site for nutrients and pH adjustment. Uh, we sell various different stones, crushed stone to decorative round stone, uh, as, really? as well as we um, also are authorized dealer for three different manufacturer of pavers, which make uh, stone patios. Um, that's Unilock, Paved Stone, and Belgard. And we also sell uh, natural stone for patios and other hardscape jobs. Mm. Well, I was just truly surprised when I came down in there because... You know, of all you, you take, it looks like you take everything the stumps and big trees or branches or whatever else. Now, is it the trees that you get your mulch or you must grind them up? Or how do you so, have? so, what we have on, on site are, are uh, timber grinders, they grind specifically wood product. Okay, um, and by accepting in that, uh, what is considered an organic waste debris, uh, we're then able to grind that and turn that into a product. Um, we do accept stumps, but we do charge for that because that is more wear and tear mm. on the equipment. Oh, I'm sure. And um, as well, just the um, uniformity of the product itself, it changes. Um, any material that uh, is not made into a product that maybe is not suitable for the product, we actually send to the burn plant in Springfield, where they uh, then take that and turn it into energy. Springfield, and Mass? Springfield, New Hampshire, the Springfield New Power Hampshire. Company. And uh, that's right on route uh, on uh, I-89. I was going to say, it must be, it's not, it's not far from the uh, Vermont border, if I'm not mentioning. Well, actually, it. um, it's exit 13, um, if you pass it up there. Up there, New London. Yep, you'll see that way right there. There. And there. then what we also do is we take home wood ash from the incineration, and we use that as a pH buffer for our loam. Really? Which also increases the organic matter of the soil, increases the retention of nutrients in the soil, and as well... Um, other nutrients like potassium and magnesium, which are pretty hard to find in a uh, composting system. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I, so how much, now you, you must, I mean, I, I didn't never heard of you, but I mean, do you get a lot of business down there? I mean, how do you do all your uh, advertising or whatever? I mean, so we, you know, obviously we have uh, mailed flyers that go out to not only residents but contractors in the area. So uh, local landscapers to garden centers um, to construction companies, uh, but also residents of the area um, get flyers and they're able to come in and buy one yard at a time for their pickup truck or their their trailer that they're bringing in. 
And then as well, we get business from the landscapers that are working regionally around the area so that they don't have to go far to get product. Um, and then as well, we also are a wholesaler, so we can ship large uh, tractor trailer loads to a garden center or landscape company that can handle it, and then they can utilize that. So our footprint really is um, the Massachusetts area, or New Hampshire, Massachusetts, some of Maine, and some of Vermont. Uh, we cover quite a range of um, for geographic mm. um, radius. But we, um, as for a retail center, um, we definitely always welcome in residents. Uh, we can always coach them on the projects that they're doing and, and get them the best product that's obviously going to satisfy them for their landscape needs. Hmm. Interesting. And as, as, well, as well, we also do uh, social media. So we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn. Um, we, we definitely advertise through that and, and make sure that people know about our deals uh, that are going on, whether we have a fire sale or mm, something of that mm. nature. Hmm. So, <clears throat> mulch, I, know, I, do you, you know, I notice on some you have different kinds of mulch, but what, there's like the, was it the black mulch or the red mulch or the whatever mulch. I mean, how do, how do you make that kind of mulch? How do you make mulch? Like so, um, there's, there's essentially two uh, major lines mm -hmm. of mulch. You have an enhanced product and then you have a natural, all natural product. The enhanced product, uh, we use, utilize a all natural dye. For the black, we would use a charcoal. Oh, okay. uh, for the red mulch, we use an iron oxide, which is just rust, which is, comes from, you know, our bedrock. Um, and as well, so when we're, when we're making that enhanced product, we're, we're grinding to, to a triple ground product and incorporating that dye in with the grind process. That's really, what it's doing is really getting that color into the bark and chip and really making a strong lasting mulch that can obviously adhere to the, um, the sun and rain and be able to give the customer the color that they want. Um, when we look at the natural mulches, we're doing a double and triple grind, but we're not including any uh, enhancement or dye into the process. It's the natural mulch it is. Hmm. There are some customers that really want that color. They want the black so it can make the flowers pop. Um, there's other customers that want the all natural because they like the brown. They like the idea that it is all natural. So on the all natural lines, we carry 100% uh, pine. Hmm. We do a premium blend, which is uh, spruce fir blend. Uh, we also do an aged spruce hemlock, which is aged up to two years. Uh, really nice, dark, rich color. And uh, what I really like is we do a composted mulch, which is a finer mulch, uh, finer bark and chip with a little bit of compost in it. Um, it's an all-natural product that um, is able to offer the plants some nutrients throughout the season, but also give it that cover to retain moisture and prevent weeds from growing up. Hmm. It's funny because this year we tried to grow a small garden. We've been doing it's like a small, small, small garden, but we also have a lot of plants we put out during the summertime, the uh, annuals, a few perennials, but I know the, uh, some, I don't know who has sold me a bunch of uh, compost and peat moss and something else, and I, my wife says, what in the heck is it? What do you use peat moss for? And I said, well, I don't know. They just told me to mix it all in. And So compost is actually a, an excellent soil amendment um, in, in, in many ways. Uh, when, whenever we're increasing organic matter in soil, we're increasing the, uh, uh, the soil microbiology. We're increasing the, I guess you can call them bugs or yeah. bacteria, actinomycea in the soil. That's going to allow nutrient cycling to completely happen and be available to the plant. Hmm. Um, as well, you're, you're giving some moisture retention because that, uh, what we would call in soil science world, humic substances are able to retain water in the soil and be able to release it to the plants slowly. And so that in the rooting zone, they have that moisture and they're constantly growing. Hmm. Um, when you look at, there's various different lines of compost. Um, we do a leaf and lawn debris compost. Uh, what we do is we take in leaf and lawn debris, whether it's from the contractors or residents, just mm -hmm. like you dropped yeah, off yeah, the brush. Yeah. We windrow it out uh, in these you know, pretty fashionable windrows, uh, and we get the temperature of that windrow up to 165 degrees, because what you have is you have the microorganisms in that windrow breaking down that carbon and breaking down the, the plant matter, mm -hmm. so it's creating heat. And what that heat is also doing is uh, killing the weed seeds that may be coming from the grass, 
and as well killing any type of compounds like herbicides and pesticides that may be coming in from the uh, leaf and lawn debris as well. Um, once that compost reaches a stabilized temperature, it mm -hmm. has cooked to its maximum, and then we run it through a trommel screener where we screen it at a 3 8 inch particle size. Mm -hmm. That creates a very beautiful uh, black, um, I like to call black gold, or just a black humic substance that can be then amended into the soil for a garden or you know anything really you could top dress it on a lawn if you say aerate your lawn in the fall yeah, yeah. you can top dress with that compost reseed and get your lawn lush and green well i know this year like i said we put I, we put all this stuff on and we i will say we've got the best looking tomato plants and cucumber plants we've ever had so if, if it works out the way i hope it is we should have plenty of cucumbers this year and I guess tomatoes, but mm -hmm. I don't know. We just put them all on there and we had we had bought this um, garden kit and uh, started loading it up with, with, with dirt and um, this peat moss or whatever it is and compost and all that stuff. And I, and I have to say, I have never seen really such healthy plants as I've got this year. So, As a soil scientist, I, um, I really promote and, and strongly always um, suggest using an organic matter input like that. Really? Um, using commercial fertilizer is always a great um, source for a quick boom to the plant, getting that plant that food to grow. But what compost and those organic amendments are going to do is give that plant a slow release of nutrients throughout the whole growing season. And so tomatoes very much love compost. Hmm. They, they, they take it in because that plant is requesting so many nutrients throughout the growing season. Same thing with cucumbers. Hmm. And when you give it an initial starter fertilizer, it's going to help it grow in that initial phase. Hmm. But coming down into the months like July and August, um, you know, it's still requesting that nitrogen that it needs. And compost actually breaks down over a three to five year period. So you actually, it, every year you're putting it in, you're building up what is called soil tilth or soil health, and you're, you're really uh, making that environment the most optimum environment for plant growth through the interaction of the microorganisms into the soil to the, the plant growing itself. Hmm. Interesting. I remember as a kid, my father always had a garden, <clears throat> and um, well, of course for a while I shared one with my uncle. and. All they would ever do is just rototill the garden every year, and they always was it was always important to put cow manure down. Mm -hmm. You know, more I don't know what was the difference between cow or horse or chicken or whatever goat or whatever, but there was always cow manure. Well, the with manure inputs, um, what you're looking at is per animal. There's actually their digestive system is actually breaking down their their waste in different ways and making different uh, oh, nutrient really? balances. Yeah. Cow manure has always been a big input because yeah, you know, in, in the Northeast we've, we've been you know predominantly a dairy and beef industry which is, yep. is steadily changing over mm. to vegetable and, and smaller farms. Uh, but when you look at, you know, with my garden at home, I have a 20 foot by 30 foot garden mm. and um, I amend it with goat manure but I also amend it with wood ash, and I use some other amendments and, and compost as well that you know we, we generate at our yard. Um, I always like to promote our compost locally because really it's keeping a local waste or what is considered a waste to a local product to the local community. Hmm. Um, as much as important it is to use these products, I think it's much more important to use the products that are locally surrounding you, therefore eliminating that truck uh, trucking product and uh, making a more sustainable uh, program. Hmm, interesting. So now while well, you've got, of course, the mulch you talked about down there, what else do you have? You said you've got rocks down there that you also break down into the uh, decorative uh, mm -hmm. stones there for the, the garden, <laughs> so the we, flower we, garden. We source out um, various different stones throughout the region. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we carry everything from a three-quarter crushed granite to a three-quarter red slate, to a beautiful tiger rock. We also have an awesome uh, white mountain river stone that you do not see at really any other uh, garden centers around, which is, mm. it's, it's a nice little vein up in the white mountains that um, makes a, well, 
Mother Nature made it, but mm. it was a, it, you know, it's just a nicer looking uh, tone of colors mm. for a decorative stone. Yeah. Uh, we also have, you know, um, the, your classic round stones that are found locally within our sandbanks around here that are, you know, everything from a 3 8 size to a 3 to 6 inch size. Um, and then, you know, we also have the white stone and, and hard pack that is used for driveways and, and pavers and things like that. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Well, you got quite a, I know you've got quite an operation going on down there. Yeah, our yard is about 40 acres. Yeah. Um, we employ a little over 20 people wow. a year. Um, like I said, we've been in business since 1989, so our customer base is very large. Um, and we're able to get product uh, to areas, you know, around the region to, you know, be able to get our customers the best value for the product. Hmm. So, you know, as well, it's a win in business when, you know, you have a satisfied customer and, and people are obviously supplying the materials needed for their end users. Hmm. Well, like I said, because I didn't know what, to, I mean... <laughs> Of course, in the fall, the city picks up the leaves and all that stuff. But during the summertime, when you're, when some of these bushes or whatever else get going, and you need to do something with them, what do you do with them? Well, and now, you know, it was nice to know that, and she referred us over there that because I would never have known that you were there. Mm -hmm. Whenever anybody uh, brings in brush debris or grass clippings or leaf debris, we always want them to come to the scale room so they can check in. Mm. First and foremost, we want to check the load. Mm. We don't want to just take in a yeah. stream of what is considered waste and not yeah. keep our eye on it. We want to have sure. the best quality product yeah. we can have. Yeah. But as well, we also want to make sure that the customer is aware of the heavy machini machinery that's operating around the yard. And as well, notify our workers that, mm. hey, this truck is going up to the yard to dump, keep an eye out for them, you know, essentially being as safe as possible. Hmm. Now, what about in a, in a uh, say, like after the holidays, you take in the, the, the live trees that people are ditching out because they, yep, hot Christmas is over so with. And in the, in the wintertime, usually January, even all the way into February and March, we have people bringing in Christmas trees um, that are then, again, broken down. So either. what do you do with them? You, you that, also is, that is ground, uh, and like I said, ground either into a product or into a burn stock for the power plants in the state. Really? Mm -hmm. huh. So what could, I mean, because I remember years ago, around years ago, you could see them on the side of the road, people would just dump them and all that jazz, and it's like, all right, so. And for us to work locally with the municipalities around here, like Concord and Pembroke, we're able to relieve, um, not necessarily a burden, but yeah. that activity and operation for them. Yeah. And, and, and allow the town to really focus in on the important things in the Department of Public Works to focus on the important things that their budget uh, can handle. And, and by taking that in, we're offers, obviously offering that service to the community. Mm. But just like you said, you know, come uh, summertime when you may be uh, you know, trimming out a bush mm. or doing something like that, you know, if you had to wait until fall time, that's going to sit in your yard. Oh, yeah, of course. And, and not, yeah. you know, potentially be a nuisance on uh, site. Yeah. But, um, you know, we can easily, quickly process process that for you. And, uh, you know, the hope is you come in and drop something off and bring something home. Yeah, really, yeah. Yeah. Huh. I'm trying to think. Now, you don't do uh, sand down here, like beach sand or things like that. We actually do. Um, you do? Yeah. We, really? have, we have a screen sand, which is your, um, you know, your two to four millimeter sand that is used for drainage layers, whether it's septic or, you know, uh, structural based uh, use. Mm. But we also carry a play sand, which is a nice flower sand. It's a much finer sand. And it's more for your 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 sandboxes. Yeah, to, yeah. Uh, one thing I always like, you know, if, if you have a, a beachfront area and you need to add in a little mm, bit more sand, that's yeah. another a great product for it. And it's really nice to sit on. You know, it doesn't the the, the screen sand is a little bit more coarser. Yeah. So it doesn't yeah. have that you know flower feel to it. Yeah. We also offer an infield ball mix, really? which is um it's a it's a it's a silt and clay sand mix that uh, is specifically used for like baseball fields and any such use like that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Another big thing we like to do is uh, specialty soils, um, which you know I work very closely with. Um, we, we make bioretention filter medias for stormwater basins or rain gardens. Mm. We do um, planting bed mixes to horticultural subsoils, to drainage layers, and even structural soils like sand-based structural soils. Gosh. 
you went to school for all this? Yeah, I went to the University of Maine. Um, I graduated with a soil and water science degree. I worked in research under my advisor, um, acknowledged in seven published journals, and I've worked in agriculture as well. Um, even had a little stint in the paper industry. But really, huh? My advisor is uh, Dr. Ivan J. Fernandez. He's world-renowned soil scientist. So it was a really good program to be. What ch made you go into that, though? Just out of curiosity, what? Um, made well, you choose that. When I started school, I, um, I, I ideally I wanted to be a pharmacist, but then I, I got into chemical engineering. And mm. um, when I started the program up there, um, I really enjoyed it. I liked the challenges and um, chemistry and physics of it. But um, I started to want to work outside. Mm. Um, I yeah. actually had a, my first summer job at, at school. I worked for the Uni University of Maine Cooperative Extensions. And I, um, I ran a huge vegetable trial at the uh, local farm we had. And uh, after that summer, I just, I really, I really wanted to be outside. and. Um, randomly found, I, one day I was in the library searching uh, careers and I found soil science. Really? So I took, uh, I took the intro class and quickly fell in love with it. Um, and mm -hmm. that next summer I was already, I started working for the department under my advisor and I stayed through and got my degree. I was also a uh, vice president of the soil judging team there. Really? Where we uh, competed with other schools on soil mapping. Yeah. And you'd have competitions where you would, uh, pretty much delineate a soil and how correct you were was your grade and as a team or as an individual and you compete around the uh, well it's actually a nationally competitive program I would I would have not thought there was that much of an interest or that it's been. it's kind of a uh, I'd like to think of it as like a hidden science I think it's one of the most important sciences though I think uh, soils are is, is you know in my opinion our most important natural resource it's mm -hmm. alive you know it's um we cannot promote soil health as much as we can. Hmm. And um, when you look at these schools like Cornell, uh, UMaine, UNH even, uh, even all over the country, soil science is definitely there. It's not a popular science that um, I think uh, kids go after unless they really come into it. Yeah. Or they maybe had it in their family or, uh, or maybe they just you know, had a job one time and they, they found you know, the joy in it. Hmm. Um, but it is it is a very um, it, it is an extensive program, and you know USD all the way from NRCS to USDA to hmm. local DES here to company private companies like uh, the one I work for. Yeah, huh. I know for years Concord the Concord Heights especially I don't know about so much about downtown or up in the other parts of Concord, but I know the Heights has always been known as a place of sandy soil. Mm -hmm. And it seems like nothing but pine trees grow up there. Pine trees love sandy soils, they yeah. like lower pH soils. Um, as well, this alluvial vein that was, you know, the river, so as the glacier receded, deposited all this sand, yeah. uh, Concord was always known for Concord gravel. It's a oh, yeah. beautiful yeah. drainage layer, um, and, and that coarse sand is actually a really good sand, like I said, for the screen sand product. Hmm. Because I know they've tried to grow different types of uh, trees or plants or whatever and say, oh, forget it because you'll never grow because it's always sandy up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sandy it's, soil. So sandy, you know, like I said, the pine trees do like the sandy soil. If you add, add, add organic matter to the, um, to the soil, then you are able to obviously maybe get some different trees to grow. Mm. Uh, I mean, we don't strictly just have pine trees. We have obviously various different... No, I know though, but when we lived there on the heights, it was pine everywhere and with that came the pitch mm -hmm. but um, yeah it was just interesting because you know, like some spruce trees or elm or maybe maple or whatever but it was always those stupid pine trees yeah and I don't know maybe it was it just maybe it was something I heard when I grew up but always watch out for thunder showers because lightning loved pine trees for some reason they're a tall straight tree so yeah it must be or something always, you know a pine tree will find its way to the top of the canopy of the forest it's in and oh really be one of the tallest trees there so lightning most likely can hit it before the other trees so lightning likes the what the tallest well it, it wants to find the tallest point to hit really yeah all right so that's why you have a lightning rod you know 
All right, so now I'll ask you that's another question. Question: I've heard that lightning came down. Now, you tell, does it come up out of the ground, or how does it come? What is it? What is the right story there? Well, I mean, lightning comes down from the ground, and then it grounds, and you have it, you know, essentially meet, and that's that is the lightning itself. I'm not a meteorologist, so I don't really know. No, but you know, it's interesting because you're talking about the ground swell and all this stuff, and lightning, and I heard that, you know never go underneath a tree because lightning would stri you'd strike a tree and you could get struck by lightning or mm -hmm. something like that but yet if it comes up out of the ground i always thought it came down from the sky well you know i think you know it obviously comes from the sky yeah the clouds, but um, yeah. again I'm, I'm not absolutely I, sure. oh this time of year it's all i can think of a stupid lightning but uh, <clears throat> but back on the uh, the recycling of what we're doing i wanted to mention that uh, we also offer to municipalities grinding and screening services really so um, there's a lot of municipalities that are taking in brush debris and mm. compost yeah um, obviously the ones local to here don't because we take it for them but these other towns that don't have facilities around them like us we're able to mobilize our equipment to that transfer station, oh, work good. with the municipality, and get them to help create a better recycling story for their product. Mm. And as well, you know, obviously work within their permit that they have with the state. Yeah, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. huh, great. Well, we're getting ready to come to a close of, of the show here, but I'm telling you, Anthony, it was very, like I said, it was quite an education for me, because I mean, I don't know much about nothing, but to see those piles and everything else, I'm thinking, wow. This is quite an operation down here. Yeah, and we're actually planning uh, to start soon. We, we'd like to start introducing uh, to the local schools tours where they could bring in their students. Oh, yeah. And we give them an educational uh, experience on the processes that we do yeah. uh, to, you know, obviously the sustainable recycling story that we'd like to uh, be part of. Oh, I can see it would be an excellent uh, for the schools to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure the kids definitely, especially those of the uh, uh, fifth, definitely fifth, maybe fourth grade students, sixth grade, but yeah, definitely. I think, you know, a lot of times they see the products, you know, their parents may bring it home or the landscaper may bring it over, but yeah. it's always good to educate that, you know, there is a process to it. And, that, and again, that recycling story of taking a product like leaf and lawn debris mm, and turning it mm. into a value-added product. Sure. Uh, and as well, talking about soil health. Yeah. That's very important. Exactly. Well, good. And if they wish to give you a call, I know you, I said you're located on 106 down toward Venos, but on 106, but what the number to call you at is? 603-229-3200. Uh, so 229-3200. And the address officially is, uh, what was it? If, um, do you type it into your GPS? If you type in 709 Keith Avenue, Pembroke, New Hampshire, that'll actually take you right to our yard, which is right off of Route 106. Really? Yeah, I that know. road going down is actually called Keith Avenue. Oh, for goodness sakes. Yeah. I would not have thought that, because I know it's, you know. Whenever I talk to people, I say we're right on 106. Oh, yeah. You see the, the big the you, sign. You the see the doctors. big sign. Yeah, the you dirt doctors. You can't yeah. miss it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, interesting. Well, great. Well, we've been talking with Anthony Druin from the Dirt Doctors, and again, if you have any question about mulch or uh, what to do with your leaves or trees or branches give him a call or Benny I could get down there and see him and he'll give you the grand tour and show you what they can do for you so with that in mind thank you to my director Ian Marks and have a great week great weekend there and we'll look forward to seeing you soon on Around Town I'm your host Dick Patton